It is 6 p.m. on, two, on Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021. I will call this meeting of the Miami Township Montgomery County Board of Trustees to order. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Morris. Here. Mr. Posey? Here. Mr. Culp? Here. Reading of casualties. Chief Stegelmeyer. Good evening, board. The following is the first responder casualty list for the period of October 20th through November the 3rd, 2021. Trooper Ted L. Binda, Iowa State Patrol, Iowa. End of watch October 20th, 2021. Police Officer Stephen Evans, Burns Police Department, Kansas. End of watch October 25th, 2021. Police Officer Tyler Timmons, Pontoon Beach Police Department, Illinois. End of watch October 26, 2021. Assistant Fire Chief Lucas Stevenson, Mandeville Volunteer Fire Department, Arkansas. End of watch October 26, 2021. Firefighter Larry Wyant, Joe's Volunteer Fire Department, Colorado. End of watch October 26, 2021. And Staff Sergeant Jesse Sherell, New Hampshire State Police, New Hampshire. End of watch, October 28th, 2021. Everyone could please join me in recognizing a moment of silence. Thank you. We have no uh, guests or presentations. I'd like to welcome all of those in the office. Uh, office, oh, man, I am off today. Uh, in the meeting, thank you for coming to today's meeting. Uh, I will make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Mr. Morse. Aye. Mr. Posey. Aye. Mr. Culp. Aye. Chief Stegelmeyer, you have uh, two different liquor permits? Yes, sir. Again, board this evening in your uh, packets were two liquor permit um, requests. One being a new liquor permit, that would be for the uh, Fumon Lao Bistro and Patio on Miamisburg Centerville Road. And that is a new liquor permit for a D1, which is beer only uh, consumption on the premise or original sealed containers for carry out until 1 a.m. And the second is a transfer of liquor permit, which are a C1 and a C2 from the Malik LLC doing business as Deli and Discount Tobacco on Dayton Cincinnati Pike. And it's going to Rita Rudra Inc doing business as quick, uh, quick Shop at the same address. This is a C1 and C2, which is for beer only uh, carryout in sealed containers and a wine and mixed beverage in sealed containers for carryout. We have no objections uh, for the board on any, either of these two applications, and I'm available for any questions if you have them. Mr. McCord, you have resolution 76. Good evening, board. Uh, before you, your consideration of resolution to authorize the township administrator to execute a lease agreement on replacement multifunctional devices or photocopier printer devices uh, for the township. We have currently six machines across the three buildings that are nearing the end of their current lease term uh, ending in November, December, and next June. Um, they're, over, they're covered under three separate leases, and this would consolidate those three into one overarching uh, agreement with a combined uh, usage, usage totals that will allow us to better manage our uh, copy overages and reduce our overall copy expense. And I've included a comparison document in your reading materials just to kind of show you the comparison between the three. Uh, bids that we did receive and um, are recommending that we uh, choose ProSource over on Byers Road as they've met the most favorable uh, criteria in the comparison. As part of this process, I assume there was some auditing of usage because there's three or four different departments and I noticed that the, the contracts called for different levels of copies in them. Do we typically get real close to those numbers, go over those numbers? Does it vary year to year, or how comfortable are we that we're at the right number? We've been a little bit of all of that. That's why we wanted to go to a single agreement, was so we could better pool those numbers. Uh, I know uh, the police department has been going over its allotment 
and we typically run a little bit you know, under with the others. We did right size a couple of years ago when we updated the uh, contract for this building, but um, this gives us a better usage of, of what we've got and we only have to settle up annually now. So it'll, Excellent. it should reduce that. It will reduce the overages short of producing, you know. No, I appreciate you putting in the time to look at that. I have, I'm with an organization when I joined the organization, our copy costs, I just thought were incredibly high. And I looked and we were paying for 10,000 copies a month and we mm -hmm. didn't use but 500. <laughs> so somebody had signed a bad deal in, in prior. So that's great that you've got that put together. Any other questions on any of these motions? All right. We are now moving into public comment period. If you're here to provide a public comment on something other than the zoning meeting, if you're here for the zoning meeting, there'll be a public comment period during that. But if you'd like to come forward and make a public comment on any other issue for the trustees, now would be the time. All right, seeing none, we will pl close the uh, public comment period. Open consideration to votes and resolutions and motions. I will make a motion to approve the liquor permit um, item A, Transfer Moloch LLC, DBA, Deli, and Discount Tobacco. I will second. Any discussion? Mr. Morris? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. Mr. Culp? Aye. I'll make a motion to approve the liquor permit for Happy Family Dayton, Inc., doing business as Fu Man Lao Bistro and Patio. Is there a second? I will second. Any discussion? Mr. Morris? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. Mr. Culp? Aye. And I'll make a motion to approve Resolution 76, 2021, a resolution to authorize the Township Administrator to execute, execute a lease and maintenance agreement for a multifunction copier equipment. Is there a second? I have a second. Any discussion? Mr. Morris? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. Mr. Culp? Aye. All right. We will now move into our public hearing. I will make a motion to open zoning case 449-21. Is there a second? I will second. Any discussion? Mr. Morris? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. Mr. Culp? Aye. This is the public hearing zoning case 449-21, which was actually continued from the October 5th, 2021 Board of Trustees meeting. It's now being resumed. The following will be the order in which the hearing will proceed. Staff will give a report. The applicant will be given an opportunity to give a presentation. All proponents will be given an opportunity to speak. All opponents will be given an opportunity to speak. A time limit of five minutes will be placed on each of the speakers. When you come forward, please give your name and address for the record. The board will review the record of, and findings of fact requirements for this case. The board will close the public hearing and make a final determination on the findings of fact. The board will make a motion on this resolution concerning this case. The board will now hear from the report of the staff. Mr. Carlson, have the legal requirements from this hearing been met? They have. Do you have a report that you can review at this time? I do. I have a report and a recommendation from the Zoning Commission to present to you, Board. Um, after review of an application to rezone uh, the former Danbury Cinema site zoned in the, PD th or in the B3 Business District into a Special Purpose Plan Development District, uh, the Zoning Commission has recommended denial of zoning case 449-21 and a 4-1 to one vote, um, four votes to deny, one vote to approve. Uh, the Zoning Commission in the review um, certainly stated their appreciation um, of potential investment in a vacant site within the business district, uh, but ultimately determined uh, that the proposed use is not compatible with the goals and recommendations of several community planning efforts, specifically citing the comprehensive plan and the Dayton Mall Master Plan, and that the project's site layout and building design do not meet Miami Township community design standards. Before I get into more detail of the Zoning Commission recommendation for some additional site context, uh, the Danbury Cinema site is located just across the street here from our building uh, between Lyons Road and Kings Ridge Drive, just south of the Dayton Mall. Uh, the property is zoned in the B3 Business District. Uh, so with the rezoning application, the applicant has provided a, a preliminary plan that proposes demolition of the existing Danbury Cinema site to allow construction of a Mazda car dealership. The current plan proposes use of the full site for a mix of new and used car sales. Uh, the site is surrounded by a mix of retail, office, entertainment uses with no residential users currently in the area. In the recommendation, the Zoning Commission cited several concerns with the site layout and building design, specifically the proposed placement of the building and the proposed building materials 
for lack of compliance with the standards of the Miami Township Zoning Resolution. However, much of the discussion was based on the proposed use of the property. The B3 Zoning District allows for some automobile-related uses, but is limited to car rentals, lease or repair, such as small lot, car rentals, uh, such as Enterprise or Avis by the mall, um, as well as some auto service stations, Valvoline uh, oil change. Would that include a U-Haul type place, running trucks and such? Uh, storage of trucks generally, I believe, would be, um, could potentially be included in, in leasing, yes sir. Uh, to use the property for auto sales, the property is required to be rezoned. Uh, the proposed development standards, uh, a couple of screenshots are shown on screen, um, <coughs> specifically cite automobile sales as a permitted use, but otherwise require that all plans submitted as part of a plan development uh, would otherwise meet the uh, site and building design criteria of the township zoning resolution. Um, staff has cited concerns uh, with uh, use compatibility of a car dealership uh, within a mixed use uh, urban core uh, commercial development such as the Dayton Mall, uh, specifically as related to uh, the zoning pattern of the community. Uh, the only standard zoning district in the township that permits uh, car sales, uh, car dealerships is the B4 zoning district. Uh, the B4 zoning district is typically found on the periphery of a more uh, urban core prime residential area. The B4 zoning district is intended for some outdoor sales, um, such as a garden center or animal kennels, animal pounds. Um, but with that said, even in the B4 zoning district, uh, car sales are listed as a conditional use, which would be required to be uh, reviewed by the Board of Zoning Appeals for compatibility with surrounding properties and must meet additional criteria with higher scrutiny than a typical permitted use. So again, even in the B3 district, I mean, it's not permitted, but in the B4 would be a conditional use. Um, so the zoning resolution is, is typically written in a way of uh, progressively more intense uses. Um, so placement in the B4 district um, by placing car dealerships as a conditional use. Uh, the zoning resolution views them as impactful enough that uh, in a district that otherwise permits outdoor sales and outdoor uses, um, some review of higher level of scrutiny should be applied to a car dealership. So in discussion of the rezoning and the proposed standards, uh, the zoning commission felt that the use of the property as a car dealership uh, is not compatible with the goals of township community planning efforts, citing both the conference plan and the Dayton Well Master Plan. Uh, both plans recommend development of commercial sites into mixed use development with an emphasis on walkable design, integration of green space and public space, and uses that will complement the surrounding area and create an inviting community space. Comprehensive plan specifically designates the property as general retail, um, detailed further as intended for regional shopping centers and convenience shopping areas. Uh, the community recommended prioritization of redevelopment of uh, older sites in the master plan, uh, specifically within the general retail and use designation uh, for a utilization of mixed use development and creation of public spaces. The Dayton Wall Master Plan identifies uh, more specifically the Lions Ridge Corridor as a potential catalytic development site uh, for revitalization of the Dayton Mall area, specifically referencing actually the uh, Danbury property as a potential large site able to accommodate a mixed use catalytic development. Um, four scenarios were proposed as potential um, development scenarios for the Lions Ridge area. Um, these scenarios are intended to provide a vision for how the area uh, should develop as properties are sold and made available for redevelopment. Uh, the Zoning Commission acknowledged that the Dayton Mall Master Plan is intended to be a long-range plan um, that is not accomplished in the span of a few years, uh, but over time as, as development and land use proposals are brought forward for review uh, to the Commission and to the Board of Trustees. Um, so rather than uh, looking at specific layout of each of the four scenarios, uh, the importance of these scenarios and these drawings um, is identifying the goals and themes uh, for redevelopment. Um, so again, as these properties are, are sold and made available, um, the common themes of the plan should be applied, um, specifically uh, human scale street front buildings, um, integrated uh, street trees, walkable, bikeable spaces that maintain public interest um, and are typically and commonly associated with being open and operated at times of day to attract people to the district, such as an entertainment user, uh, restaurant or retail users, to incur encourage frequent visitation um, of the area by the community and as a destination for regional use. 
Um, so again, the Zoning Commission felt that the use as a car dealership did not meet the goals of the township's plan for an area that has been uh, earmarked and identified as a potential site for redevelopment into a walkable downtown destination that complements the existing regional and local businesses in the Dayton Mall area and the township. Um, and generally, again, felt that uh, the Dayton Mall master plan um, did not support a, a more intense use that uh, was predominantly um, outdoor storage taking up a large portion of uh, an otherwise potential redevelopable mixed use area. Um, board, you've been provided with a number of public comments um, sent in the form of emails and letters. Um, if you have any questions, we can certainly discuss. Um, and if you have any questions at this time for staff, uh, specifically regarding the case, I'm happy to discuss. Any questions? All right, hearing none, the applicant can come forward. Good evening, uh, Robert Reichert, 4780 Socialville Foster Road, Mason, Ohio, 45040. Uh, I would suggest to you gentlemen that the most important question tonight is what's really best for the township? What's good for the township? When the zoning board turned us down, they commented that the car dealership was not in keeping with the Dayton Mall master plan, as you just heard. And they also commented that they would rather wait for a development that was consistent with the Lions Ridge portion of that plan. And I certainly believe, and I think you do too, that there's no question that the master plan, if developed, would be a significant improvement for the area. It's a nice plan. It looks great and it, it provides a whole lot of community benefit. Uh, however, the Lions Ridge portion of that plan calls for redevelopment of our property, the, the uh, Danbury site. It calls for redevelopment of the self-storage facility, which is immediately across the street on the western side. It also includes the Golden Corral restaurant, which is now closed. It includes Wright Pat Credit Union, the Polking Bowling Facility, the Skyline Chili Parlor, and seven businesses along the north side of Kings Ridge Drive. Given the state of our world with um, buying at home, uh, working from home, I, I would say or suggest at least that, that implementing that plan in a, to 100% is a fairly lofty goal. What we're asking for you to do is to modify a very small portion of that plan. If you approve our request, uh, we will invest $7 million in the property. We'll have 100 employees in the JED when the dealership is fully operational, and we'll bring business into the area. I think it's important to note, and you saw on the uh, slide there before, that the location of the dealership uh, in the southeast corner of Lyons Road and Lyons Ridge Drive doesn't prevent the master plan from, from going forward for the rest of the area. And in fact, it would probably encourage some further development. Significantly in there, that plan might be the development of the uh, abandoned Golden Corral. There's nothing about our plan that'll block the redevelopment of the adjoining property according to the master plan. That, that still can all be done if in fact that, that can't happen. We are only looking at the one little corner and it's in the corner that does not, it's not in the middle of the plan, so it's, it's just, just down at the one end. I hope you would agree that the area needs business activity. You've got the Dayton Mall with uh, closed two banker stores uh, and business activity begets more business. And, and we'll bring business activity to that area. We can provide that activity if you will let us. So I ask you to please approve the zoning change. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Yes, I'm sorry. Any questions? Thank you, sir. We will now hear from any proponents, those in favor of approving this plan. Please come forward, state your name and address for the record. You will have five minutes to speak. Good evening, trustees. Uh, my name is Skip Schaefer. Uh, my company is Commercial Realty Associates. I've been active in the 
community here for, this is my 40th year actually. And I know some of you have been around uh, maybe a pretty long time too. Some of the things that um, I'd like to talk to you on two fronts. One is that uh, from my activity in the marketplace from a commercial perspective, and I've been involved in a lot of the commercial development around the mall for the last 40 years. Um, uh, but the other front is also as a, as a property owner and stakeholder holder, um, I'm involved in and own four different properties that are within uh, a quarter of a mile to half a mile to this site. One of them almost directly across the street, which was the old, um, um, which is the old uh, Max and Irma's, which is now the uh, Blue Crab, um, and um, they have a long-term lease on that. The, uh, they're, uh, they are paying, and, and we're glad to have that tenant in there. So I'm, I want to speak to you a little bit on, on both fronts from, a, from a, a little bit of background in, in looking at master plans. I was actually a member of, uh, of, a, of a Beaver Creek task force that was looking at when the mall developed in Beaver Creek, and I was also a member of the Create the Vision in Washington Township for Undeveloped Land. So I've served on two different boards at different times to look at master planning for those areas, and, uh, and I was also involved in this plan, actually back in 14 or 15, and as I was looking through the plan, I saw my name on one of the pages as a member of, of some meetings that, we've, that we attended at that time. So that's a little bit of, a little bit of my background. Um, a little bit of nostalgia, just to give you an idea, because the areas do change. Uh, you probably remember, uh, or you may remember, we had a, a, I think it was called Southland, movie theater, a uh, drive-in theater that was on the corner, which has now been replaced with a shopping center with um, Hobby Lobby and a furniture store and a number of things. So, but, the, uh, but as you know, the drive-in was there for many years and it came time for a change and, that, and it was redeveloped in that. Another, another uh, uh, building that, uh, some nostalgia, if you might remember where the Malibu Grand Prix was located. Um, it was on, 40, uh, on 741 and um, Contemporary Lane. Um, that was redeveloped many years ago. I was involved in that transaction, still, still own part of that property now. Um, so I think one of the things that I've seen in my years of, of planning and the other municipalities and here is that change is inevitable. It always happens. And one of the big, one of the big changes that's really happened from this master plan when it was con initially um, conceived in 13 and 14 and then I think adopted in 15 was they came uh, with the four different plans, the, the different scenarios that they put together. Uh, at that time, um, the, the mall was a pretty uh, bristling place to go. There was a lot of activity happening. You had five anchors and um, business was good. Uh, the internet hadn't hit the scope yet. And uh, so in 2018, as you're probably aware, we had two major uh, anchors closed at the Date Mall. One was the Elder Beerman who went bankrupt, and the other one was um, Sears and closed up. So uh, two out of five is 40%. So the mall, quite frankly, lost 40% of its anchor stores. And I know the mall has, uh, has struggled over the years. You're probably aware that this year, the owner, Washington Prime, has filed bankruptcy, Chapter 11, and they're trying to come out of it. They had a $23 million interest payment to pay back, I think, in February or March, and they had a $100 million loan to cover a couple of the malls because both this mall and the Beaver Creek Mall are, are in dire, dire straits right now. Uh, I think anything we can do to redevelop and look at changes to the master plan, I believe that this development really can serve as a catalyst to the area. The businesses that I've talked to on Lions Road and Kings Ridge, um, without a doubt, I, and I spoke to many of the, the property owners on Kings Ridge, there was not a single person that said, hey, we need to have something happen around here. There's some development happening in front of the mall, as you know, and the whole idea when this master plan was put together was to help to do something to the south side of the mall. The problem, the problem that- 30 were, seconds, Mr. Schaefer. I'm sorry? You have 30 seconds left. The problem that has occurred um, with with the, uh, with the uh, anchors closing is they've created a gap and that master plan is no longer, it's no longer viable. It was putting the developments on the outside of the mall. What has to change right now would be that those developments would be considered as part of the mall. Exactly what has happened to Austin Landing, that they have the apartments, they have live, work, and play inside that development, not across the street from it, 
and that's what has to happen here. It has to, plans have to be changed, have to be open to accept those kind of changes to, to have the catalyst. As a property owner, I own uh, the buildings right down on, on uh, I'm involved in Lions Road, uh, on the other side of the storage buildings that are down there. Those tenants have told me, they said, what's gonna happen around here? People don't look at this area as an up and coming area, and this can be a catalyst, a $7 million development, 100 jobs. I would, I would ask from a property owner's perspective that you approve, uh, that you approve this tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other proponents, those in favor of the plan that would like to come forward? Hi, my name is uh, Mark Kyholtz, and uh, I own Skyline Chili at 8906 Kings Ridge Drive. And uh, I'm kind of a, I'm like kind of in between here on the whole shooting match. Um, I, at first, you know, I sent an email saying that it didn't really fit into the plan, and uh, you know, I was against it. And then, after uh, you know, meeting and talking to a few other business uh, associates, um, I decided that, you know. Do we want to pass this opportunity up? Um, you know, it's something like everybody's been talking about the catalyst. Um, I know, you know, that uh, we, we've been trying to get developers to get interested in, in the property. Uh, it's a major undertaking, obviously, the whole picture. And uh, uh, so I kind of believe that, um, you know, this would be something, uh, you know, to help maybe draw interest to the area and, and maybe bring more de development into the area. Um, you know, like I say, the Golden Corral property be a great place for a four or five small retail businesses and uh, like a little strip center or something. Um, but, uh, you know, if we could just get some activity, I think, going, um, and is it, the, is it the best solution? Probably not, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean. I, I own the business right there, and I certainly would love to see, you know, more traffic in the area. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, even if I only, I figure if I only get like four or five more cars a day through my drive through you know, at 10 bucks, well, you take that and you string that out over a whole year, that's a lot of money. So maybe I'm being selfish. I don't know. I wouldn't want to be in your guy's position to make this decision because... I know there was a whole, with Chris and, uh, and Kyle when he was here, there was a whole lot of work involved in developing, you know, the plan, and you hate to just throw it in, into the waste can. Um, so, uh, and I'm not recommending that we do that, but uh, anyway, and uh, so that really, you know, all I have to say, you know, just to keep, I'm sure you guys will make the best decision for the community and for the township, and uh, I want to congratulate Mr. Morris and Mr. Posey on their victories yesterday. So. It's Really all I got. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any others in favor of the plan that would like to come forward? All right, seeing none. Anyone opposed to the plan that would like to come forward and give a presentation? All right, seeing none. Um, what I'd like to do right now is give the board members uh, two or three minutes to review. We were just presented with three additional um, emails or letters uh, associated with this case, and I want to make sure every member of the board has an opportunity to review them uh, before we move forward with the case. The other the one last bit of information I'd like to share with the board. Um, one of the things that I've been working on and recommending to the township that we invest in is a survey tool that allows us to get a pulse for an entire township. Because frequently in these zoning cases, we, we only get a pulse for those people who are directly connected to it, as we have here. 
so this is completely unscientific. It's not meant to do anything. I just thought I'd share it. I put a, a survey out on Facebook on three different neighborhood sites. Uh, Reader, uh, not Reader Park, the um, Villages of Miami site, which includes 962 residents. Uh, that plat is just south of this location. Vienna Park and on the next door app, uh, we got another um, 900 um, residents for those two surveys. Uh, by my calculation, this is a statistically valid sample. We got 11% uh, participation from the group in one, 9% in the other, and 8% in the other. Um, so roughly we've got about 300 people responding to this. Uh, the question was, do they favor supporting this proposal as it's designed, or do they support rejecting it? And the votes were 76% to approve, 24% uh, to reject. So just a bit of information from the general public. With that, I'll make a motion to close zoning case 449-21. Is there a second? I will second. Any discussion? Mr. Morris. Aye. Mr. Posey. Aye. Mr. Culp. Aye. At this time, we're required under Article 31, Section 3104 of the Miami Township Zoning Resolution to make a specific findings of fact based on particular evidence presented at the hearing. The recording secretary will read each standard, call the roll to determine the finding of each trustee on the following standards. Section 3104A, the site will be accessible from public roads that are adequate to carry the traffic that will be imposed upon them by the proposed development standards where only the proposed uses and development standards are to be adopted and provides for pedestrian accessibility and connectivity throughout the design. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Posey? Yes. Mr. Culp? Yes. Section 3104B, the proposed development and or development standards adequately address issues related to compatibility with adjacent uses, environmental issues, and overall design compatibility including light and landscaping and do so in a manner that improves upon what would be achieved under the non-PD zoning standards. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Posey? Yes. Mr. Culp? Yes. 3104C, the proposed development and or development standards are indeed to produce a superior design and construction, construction than what would normally occur under the non-PD zoning standards. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Posey? Yes. Mr. Culp? Yes. Uh, 3104D, the proposal is in accordance with the goals and policies of the comprehensive plan. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Posey? Yes. Mr. Culp? No. 3104E, the conditions imposed mitigate any potential significant impacts associated with, associated with the proposal, including maintaining a minimum 100-foot distance from a business or manufacturing structure to a residential building outside of the planned development district and will not cause an un undue burden on public services and facilities, including but not limited to fire and police protection. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Posey? Yes. Mr. Culp? Yes. All right, so now we have a decision of the Board of Trustees regarding facts and findings. I move to close the public hearing for zoning case 449-21 and find that all of the above standards were met by evidence presented in the public hearing. I will second. Any discussion? Mr. Morris? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. Mr. Culp? Aye. I will make a motion to approve resolution 074-2021, a resolution to adopt a zoning map amendment from B3 business district to SPPUD special purpose plan unit development to district under zoning case 449. Therefore, be it resolved, the Miami Township Board of Trustees approves the zoning map amendment and the attached Exhibit A plan development standard under zoning case 449 and rejects, denies the zoning commission recommendation. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Mr. Morris? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. Mr. Culp? No. Department head comments. Anyone have anything? Elected official comments. Mr. Newell. Just wanted to congratulate uh, Mr. Morris and Mr. Posey on their victories yesterday. Thank you, sir. Mr. Colt. Yeah, I have none. Mr. Posey. I have none. I have none either. 
I will make a motion to go into work session at 635. Is there a second? I will second. Any discussion? Mr. Morris? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. Mr. Culp? Aye. We have two items in the work session. First is Hillgrove Union Cemetery. Thank you, Mr. President and Board. Um, as you're aware, we have an uh, agreement with the City of Miamisburg to jointly run the Hillgrove Union Cemetery. Uh, the cemetery uh, fell, actually the association years ago had issues that fell to our um, requirement to maintain. Uh, to us, it is a cemetery. To the City of Miamisburg, it is history. Um, I submitted a letter that was from Ryan Davis through Mr. Culp, who sits on that board, uh, about all the time that they spend. I ended up having a meeting with uh, Keith Johnson about this, asking him basically, what do they want? Do they need more people? Do they want more money? There really wasn't an answer. Uh, I've discussed a few other things with Mr. Uh, Culp on, um, on this board, and I think I will bring some things to you later. The purpose of this work session is just to share with you some concerns the city has about this agreement. And Mr. Culp, if you have anything else you want to add? I don't, I mean, I don't think so. Okay. If you pass along the information that they've shared with me. Yes. Very good. Any questions for Mr. Culp or Mr. Hess? Next item in work session, traffic control devices. Uh, thank you, board, or Mr. President. Uh, this was a, a topic that's been going on for a while. Um, it kind of generated from the extension of Vienna Parkway. Uh, we have, between uh, the Chief, Dan, uh, Chris, and I uh, discussed this. The devices are about $4,000 a piece. Uh, if there's been a, a request for specifically Vienna Parkway to have a device up there, our concerns are, one, is it, are they needed? Uh, and Chris is here to answer some questions, but um, just a brief, the highest average speed up on Vienna Parkway was 29 miles an hour. Uh, Chris, if you want to expand on that a little bit. Yeah, so in 2019, we did some traffic counts on Vienna Parkway and Rose, Rose Cliff and Silver Cliff and Pine Grove. Um, as Mr. Huss stated, the highest average speed in 2019 was 28.1 miles per hour. That went up to 29.1 miles per hour, so it increased by one mile per hour on average. Uh, the lowest average speed was 24.6. That went up to 25 miles per hour, so 0.4 mile per hour uh, increase. Overall traffic counts went up as expected on Vienna Parkway. Uh, they increased about 24%. Um, but they decreased by 40% on, on Silver Cliff and Rose Cliff. Um, so most of that was traffic then that was diverted that used to travel up uh, Silver Cliff, Pine Grove area and was now traveling out west uh, along Vienna Parkway. So the, the combined traffic increase overall was about 9% when you included the whole system out there. So again, not, not a significant change from what was experienced prior to the opening of the roadway, but. Uh, Chief, uh, if you will just briefly describe when we get some complaints in for speeders on what the PD's response is. Periodically through the year, we received neighborhood complaints quite often actually at speeding in various plats. We get it through Hubert Platt, we get it through the Singing Hills, we get it the village quite often. And what we tend to do is we approach it in several different ways. Depending on the location and the availability of a place to put our portable speed sign or our speed trailer, we'll erect one of those for a period of time so we get a traffic count and we get a, uh, an average speed of what's going on in that area. That's one thing we do. We also institute what we call an orange card and that's where we have the shifts go out and do sporadic different interval time traffic enforcement selectively so we can again get a visual of the police car in the area so people know that we're there. But they also uh, are there for a traffic measuring type of device and for speeding. Most of the time, the complaints we handle, we get very similar results to what Chris just told you about, that their speeding concerns are, are really not a concern. Uh, for example, uh, most of the times, like in the Miami Village and in Vienna Parkway, before you did this study, we would 
deploy our portable speed sign or trailer, and we'd get like results. The minimum speed would be, be maybe be a mile or two over what the posted speed limit is. So it really is not an issue uh, from a law enforcement standpoint. It's more of a reactionary where somebody feels somebody's going quickly, but they really are not. So those are the three steps that we kind of take when we get these complaints. Um, and the only other thing is a group, uh, our recommendation is that we stay away from the permanent signs, such as on um, Dayton, Cincinnati, Pike, and West Carrollton. If you put it in this neighborhood, where do we stop of what neighborhood do we put it in? If they, because everybody will start asking, if Vienna Parkway gets it, then villages will want it, then Sing Hills will want it, then so and so and so and so. Um, I think the best option we have is to invest in some of the newer technologies for the police department to have a couple portable ones that go up on signs or on poles so that we can do a traffic study. Some of the newer devices are Bluetooth in hand, so you just walk up and hit your phone and it tell you, or you can have it sent through the cloud. So if somebody says, oh, you know, car just went up 75 miles an hour, you can look and say, no, it didn't. So that is more of our recommendation as a group. Uh, Dan, did you have anything you wanted to add? Probably not beyond what I spoke to. We, we also get complaints on speeding and you know, you know, studies from that in order we are we able to enforce the speed limits, but we do react and discuss the concerns with the resident and then we contact the police department if necessary or I may throw an email to really in every neighborhood uh, in any given year. So uh, it's pretty widespread. There's probably speeding on every street that we used to live on as well. So it's uh, not new to any of us. But it is, it is a concern. And one of the points Dan brought up is if it's a permanent sign and it goes, let's say, on Vienna Parkway, the person that lives right there that has that flashing all night long might be flashing in their window. And everybody else would be happy, but that person's not going to be happy. So again, it comes down to the four of us. We make the recommendation to you is let's not do the permanent signs. We don't think there's a huge issue with the speeding. Obviously, the people do speed, as Dan mentioned. But uh, look into the budget for the chief to get a couple portable signs that we could then put up, one to collect data, two to remind people, and then in, back that up with the uh, selective enforcement of the officers. Would this technology be able to be moved and installed by Public Works in addition to the police force? Absolutely. They're very portable. Uh, the, the batteries themselves are lithium self-contained, so they're recharged for a period. Weather does play some effect on that as far as the cold weather versus the hot weather. But typically, we get between two and four weeks average time out of them. Uh, there were about five pounds or less a piece to get up and put up and install. Uh, very portable, very easy to maneuver. As the administrator told you about the new technology, uh, we can have the data go to a cloud where we can access this or we can access it through Bluetooth so we can get real time uh, results from that sign. But as far as portability and, and uh, erecting it at different locations, it's very easy to do. Questions? I just have a comment. I think that speed is one of those chasing things and if we installed permanent ones, you'd speed off as soon as you were past it or once you turned to another street. And I'm in favor of uh, more portable devices just to be able to make sure that we're able to represent to the township residents that we're monitoring this in as many locations as we can and making sure that it's evenly distributed throughout the township so that there aren't any known speed corridors or known corridors where speeding is not monitored. What I like about uh, this presentation, and thank you for bringing it forward and, and thinking about it, is I view this as a, another tool in the toolbox. You know, I completely agree with the philosophy uh, that there may not be places where we want these permanently installed, but I like the idea that we have this capability to move it around. I mean, within the last three weeks, as was mentioned earlier, I've gotten complaints of speeding on Miami Village Drive, Munger Road, Polo Park, Owendale, Marquise and Ferndown, Vienna Parkway. Um, clearly speeding all over the place. And we don't have enough officers to set up officer doing a speed trap on every one of those streets, um, nor do we have the capability of putting a permanent speed sign on every one of those streets. But I think we allowing our officers to be one tool for traffic control, 
to have this as another tool for traffic control that can be implemented um, by public safety and not take an officer's time up uh, could be a great thing. So I would love the administration to come back with a recommendation on a number of these units and think about you know, a comprehensive plan on moving them around, responding to residents' concerns, but also just, hey, as Terry said, uh, the neighborhood will see that we're, we're doing something um, because people speed on all the streets. And well, there's also, Mr. Morris, a perception of speeding versus reality of speeding. I have a comment on that as the son of a retired traffic cop. Is it visual speed estimation, a train skill? Yes, it is. Okay. And most people are actually responding to acceleration and not overall speed. Yes. Well, you know, one of our reports is, you know, Dan Mayberry in a snowplow. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> might want to monitor that with one of these devices. But that's the other piece. I love that this is data driven. I mean, this gives us the capability. And with this Bluetooth capability, you know, people are flying down the road. Okay, let me pull that data and share it with you from yesterday. That's educational. I mean, people need to understand. I mean, one of the common things I get told, well, if, if you count three seconds between these mailboxes, you're doing 40 miles an hour. Well, my counting of three seconds and your counting of three seconds are two different things. So we need to have real data to make decisions, and I think this gives us that. So I appreciate this discussion. Anything else for the work session? Yes, sir. All right, I'll make a motion to close the work session at 646. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Mr. Morris. Aye. Mr. Posey. Aye. Mr. Culp. Aye. We are adjourned at 647. Thank you all.